Well, good morning, good morning, and welcome to this recorded act of worship here at St. Matthew St. Luke here in Darlington. My name is David, and I'm the new curate here at St. Matthew St. Luke, and also the curate out at St. Michael's in uh, Highington. And a warm welcome to every single one of you, especially if you're joining us for the first time or if you haven't been back for some time, uh, welcome to you. What we're going to do is we're going to go through basically a morning act of worship, uh, a morning prayer um, with Sunday readings for today uh, and, and a little reflection later on. And what I'll do is I'll leave pauses here and there uh, for us to go down into the description and what you'll be able to do is find uh, not only the liturgy for today, what we'll need, but also different points, uh, songs that we'll be able to follow along with. So I'll indicate where to stop, pause, uh, and go find those, or uh, you can wait until the very end and just look at all of them together at once. So again, wonderful to have you all with us. It's wonderful to be here, and it's wonderful to start the day and start the week indeed uh, in prayer uh, as we come before God who has brought us here today. So shall we start in prayer? quiet our hearts and trust that it is God himself who has brought us here today to meet with us that we might know him and know who we are in him that we might know ourselves to be beloved children of our Heavenly Father so in silence we begin O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, sovereign God, creator of all. To you be glory and praise forever. You founded the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. In the fullness of time, you made us in your image. And in these last days, you have spoken to us in your Son, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. As we rejoice in the gift of your presence among us, let the light of your love always shine in our hearts. Your spirit ever renew our lives, and your praises ever be on our lips. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our psalm for this morning is Psalm 122. I invite you to say that from your homes or wherever you're watching it, responsorially with me. So I'll say the odd verses if you could say the even ones. I'll say them all, but if you could join me on the even ones. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. And now our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem was built as a city that is a unity in itself. Thither the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, as is decreed for Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord. For there are set the thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. O pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Peace be within your walls and tranquility within your palaces. For my kindred and companions' sake, I will pray that peace be with you. For the sake of the house of the Lord, our God, I will seek to do you good. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever, world without end. Amen. So we'll leave a moment. I'll ask you if you would like, you can pause at this time. Go down to the first song in the description below. You might need to click on the more button if it's not immediately there uh, in your field of view to be able to find the link. So now our first reading from Zechariah chapter 2, beginning at the first verse. I looked up and I saw a man with a measuring line in his hand. Then I asked, what are you doing? Where are you going? He answered me, to measure Jerusalem, to see what is its width and what is its, and what is its length. Then the angel who talked with me came forward, and another angel came forward to meet him, and said to him, run, say to the young man, Jerusalem shall be inhabited like villages without walls, 
because of the multitude of people and animals in it. For I will be a wall of fire around it, says the Lord, and I will be the glory within it. And then verse 10. Sing and rejoice, O daughter Zion, for lo, I will come and dwell in your midst, says the Lord. Many nations shall join themselves to the Lord on that day, and shall be my people, and I will dwell in, the, in your midst, and you shall know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. The Lord will inherit Judah as his portion in the Holy Land, and will again choose Jerusalem. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our gospel is taken from the ninth chapter of the Gospel of Luke, beginning at verse 43. While everyone was amazed at all that he was doing, he said to his disciples, Let these words sink into your ears. The Son of Man is going to be betrayed into human hands. But they did not understand his saying. Its meaning was concealed from them, so that they could not perceive it, and they were afraid to ask him about this saying. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. So just a word of reflection um, on this Gospel passage. May I invite you to pray with me. Lord God, you are the giver of life, and Lord, you meet us here in this place. Wherever we might be, you are alongside us. Lord, open our ears to hear your word, our eyes to see your face and your glory and your love towards us. And may I speak in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, I'm not quite sure if you knew this, but it happened to be that Tuesday this last week is the day that the church is set to celebrate the Feast of St. Matthew, his calling by Jesus, and how he had dropped everything to follow him. And I feel sort of as if I cannot not talk about this. So, the calling of Matthew will be the context of my little reflection. And if you can remember the scene, there's Matthew in his tax booth right over there. Matthew in his tax booth. And Jesus, he's walking by with all the followers, and the crowds are between the two of them. Jesus and Matthew, across the crowds, they lock eyes for a moment, and Jesus calls him. And Matthew, he drops everything there and then to follow Jesus. Here are some words from Pope Francis on the calling of St. Matthew from way back in 2013. That gaze, it overtook him completely. It changed his life. We, we say he was converted. He changed his life. As soon as he felt that gaze in his heart, he got up and followed him. This is true. Jesus' gaze always lifts us up. It is a look that always lifts us up, lifts us up, and never leaves you in your place, never lets us down, never humiliates. It invites you to get up. A look that brings you to grow, to move forward, that encourages you, because the one who looks upon you loves you. The gaze makes you feel that he loves you. This gives the courage to follow him. And he got up and he followed him. I find it incredibly fitting that here, this morning, at this church of St. Matthew and St. Luke, our gospel reading for this morning is actually taken from the gospel of St. Luke. When I first tried to read the New Testament so many years ago, I remember being confused, not only by the words and actions of Jesus, not unlike our disciples in this morning's reading, but by the fact that when reading through, by the time when I got through Mark's gospel, I was sure I had heard all of these stories before. By the time I was reading Luke, I was totally confused. What the heck was going on? Is the Bible just a repetition of the same stories? I, I just didn't understand. And at that time, I gave up before even getting to John's gospel. And yet, now, during times like this, like this morning's reading today, I'm even more grateful that we do actually have such varying accounts from different perspectives of the good news of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. In today's reading, Jesus again foretells his death. Like in Matthew and in Mark, the context of Luke's account is the confession of Peter and the disciples that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God but the disciples don't understand yet what this truly meant. This was followed by the transfigur tra transfiguration of Jesus on the mountain. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. But the disciples didn't understand this. 
This is then followed by the healing of a boy with seizures. The crowds all praise him, but they don't understand either, as in a few short chapters they'll be calling out for his death and crucifixion. And of course, we see that the disciples themselves still don't understand what Jesus is talking about in this morning's passage. Both by what immediately follows our reading, the disciples arguing about who is the greatest in the kingdom, and by what the reading itself says. Jesus says, the Son of Man is going to be betrayed into human hands. That's verse 44. And the disciples, well, Matthew's gospel says that they were greatly distressed. But here in Luke's gospel, this is elaborated on, and we're told that they did not understand its meaning was concealed from them, so that they could not perceive it, and they were afraid to ask him about it. I think in a way this should give us some hope. I know that it gives me hope. It wouldn't be until after Jesus' death when they encountered the risen Lord himself, bodily and very much alive, that they would begin to understand. It isn't until meeting with the risen Christ, who is word made flesh, that his words, the words of scripture, and I dare say, having come into being through God's word, even nature itself might begin to make sense. I think in many ways we can get things perhaps a little backwards. We often think that we need to understand before we can believe. And given the philosophical inheritance we've all received in our culture, and how this is imbued via our technology and commerce and media, etc., this does make a sort of sense. And yet, the logic of Jesus, of the Church, has it the other way around. It is rather that we believe in order that we might understand. Believe in the one who is the reference point that is immovable, against which everything else is relative. Believe that Jesus Christ is Lord, does this mean that we ought not to have questions? No, of course not. Ask the questions. Don't be afraid to ask the questions. In Christ, there are good answers. Answers that lead to life and to peace that passes all understanding. Don't ever be satisfied with poor answers. But at this point in the gospel, Matthew and the other disciples, they didn't actually understand, and yet they still followed him. I say this gives me hope because I know I don't understand. Understand truly who he is, understand the mystery of faith, understand myself even, and my own pain. And what I can say is that I am changed, and I am being changed, and that this has begun through actually meeting the risen Lord Jesus Christ, a testimony that is echoed in the lives of countless millions throughout history. I would echo the words of Pope Francis from earlier about St. Matthew and Jesus for my own testimony, actually. Jesus, he knew me, and he understood me. His gaze overtook me completely. He changed my life. I would say that I was converted. He changed my life. Like Matthew, it maybe took me a bit longer, but like Matthew, the light of his gaze, it caused me to get up. This is true. Jesus' gaze always lifts us up. It is a look that always lifts us up. It never leaves you in a, in a place in place, never lets us down, never humiliates. It invites you to get up, a look that brings you to grow, to move forward, that encourages you, because the one who looks upon you, he loves you. The gaze makes you feel that he loves you. This gives the courage to follow him. And I, like Matthew, I got up and I followed him. May I encourage you to seek, and may you find Search for God over and through the tumult of the crowds and see him seeing you, knowing you, loving you. It is his love that changes lives, that lifts up, that brings us forward and never abandons. Lord God, help us in our unbelief. Amen. So at this moment, if you'd like, I invite you to pause, go down to the description, and find our second link uh, to our second song before coming back uh, with the response. So let us now respond to scripture, perhaps the song, perhaps even my word, with the responsory. Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead and Christ shall give you light. You have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. 
Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. And Christ shall give you light. When Christ, our life, appears, you will appear with him in glory. Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. So I invite you to say with me the Benedictus together. You have raised us up for, a mighty for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of your servant David. We say together, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. And the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. You have raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of your servant, David. So we come now to our time of intercession. What I'll do is leave a moment of time after each prayer for you to bring before God anybody or anything that you would like to pray for. And at the bidding, Lord, in your mercy, would you please respond, hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you for this day. Indeed, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And we thank you for the beginning of this week. May our time, tasks, relationships, and all that comes from this week be built upon the foundation of this day. The foundation of beginning the day meeting you, built on the foundation of your love and your care for us. May we offer unto you everything that we have before us yet this week. May we rejoice in you and your gifts to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we thank you for the harvest. We thank you for the bounty that we have in this country, that we live secure, free, lives where we have work, food, shelter available to us. Lord Jesus, we pray for those who do not have work or shelter or food available, for those who are unemployed at this time, for those whose security to feed their families and themselves, Lord, are insecure. Lord, we ask that you be with our government at this time especially. Lord, as they make decisions regarding the energy crisis that might be looming, Lord, that they would seek the will of the people, that they would work for the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we thank you for all of those who've witnessed to us in the past, who've given us grace and mercy, who have loved us and allowed us uh, to be nurtured and grow into those men and women we are meant to be. Lord, we pray for them. Ask you to bless them. Be with our families and our colleagues and our friends at this time. And Lord, we pray especially for those who are sick, those who are ill, perhaps those who are dying, Lord that you would come alongside them in this time. That they would know your comfort and your presence with them. For with them and their carers, be with them in their pain, 
and their frustration and the bewilderment of not knowing what perhaps is coming next. Lord, we ask for your healing, healing of body, mind, and spirit, that hearts would be turned to you, that we would have confidence in your gospel and your saving grace. What you have accomplished, Lord Jesus, for all of us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord God, I pray for those who mourn. I pray for those who mourn because they've lost someone recently, or perhaps an anniversary is coming close. And we ask, Lord, that you would receive all of those who have died with open arms. That they would see your love and run towards you. Lord, that they would know paradise for themselves. Lord, I thank you for your resurrection and the hope of glory. But for us who are left on this side, who do mourn, grant us comfort. You who walk with us through the darkest of paths, shine in the darkness, I pray. Bind up our hearts and heal us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord God, I ask that you send your Holy Spirit upon your church, that we will be filled with your light and your love, that we would proclaim in word and action your mercy for this world, your peace and your healing, that we would be ambassadors of your love. Whatever our occupations might be, Whatever vocation you've called us to, may the life lived out be a living out of your baptism, of, the, of our baptism. Lord Jesus, that wherever we end up today and this week, that we will glorify you in all things. Pray these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now the collect set for today. Almighty God, you have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless till they find their rest in you. Pour your love into our hearts and draw, draw us to yourself. And so bring us at last to your heavenly city, where we shall see you face to face through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now let us pray as our Savior has taught us the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. In just a moment, I'll invite you uh, to go ahead and click on the last, uh, last song. Uh, but here is the final blessing. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil, and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. So that concludes our act of worship, our time of worship here together uh, at this time. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you all that you were choosing to come at this time uh, to pray together. And I invite you uh, to seek his face, to indeed look for his glory in the faces of others, in nature, wherever you might be, perhaps in prayer. And I wish that you have a wonderful week. I also invite you uh, to share this uh, or like it on Facebook, or indeed, get in touch, leave a comment below if you haven't already. And at this time, I invite you to go to our final song uh, down in the description below.
God bless every single one of you. Take care.